Hello everyone, this is YML and today I would like to discuss one of the reasons why the Adam optimizer might fail to converge for some simple cases and how this issue can be mitigated by using a straightforward technique. This video assumes that you are already familiar with stochastic gradient descent optimizers like Adam. If you are not, I've added some resources in the video description that I strongly encourage you to study first before watching this video. To start with, if you ever use the ADAM implementation in one of the popular frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlow, you could have watched the parameters and seen things like learning rate, the two betas, the epsilon, weight decay, and so on. However, at least for me, one of the parameters that stood out is the AMS grad flag. So what is this parameter? If you look at the documentation, it says that AMS CRUD parameter sets whether the AMS CRUD variant of this algorithm from the paper on the convergence of Adam and beyond is used. I would dare to say that this is not really informative, so let's dig deeper into what this parameter does and understand what it tries to achieve. First of all, let's recap the Adam algorithm. We have the moment to MT, the moving average of the square of the gradients VT, used to create an adaptive learning rate concerning the magnitude of the past gradients, and the following update rule for our parameters theta. Also, I've ignored the bias correlation part here just for the sake of simplicity. The thing that AMS grad brings to the table is the following equation where before updating the parameters, we keep the maximum VT value between its current value and the VT minus one value at the previous step. What this achieves is to have a non-increasing step size, which avoids an issue that Adam has, namely that some mini batches provide large and informative gradients, and if they occur rarely, then the exponential averaging reduces their influence, leading to poor convergence. To better illustrate this, let's take the function that the authors of MS grad used to prove this issue with Adam. So here we have a series of functions ft of x that have two branches, c of x if t mod 3 is equal to 1 and minus x otherwise, to which we apply the following constraints. x can take values between minus 1 and 1, which make the function to have a minimum and a maximum in these two points. Another constraint is that c is greater than 2, and we'll see shortly why this is necessary. And finally, to keep things simple, we also remove the momentum from Adam, making the coefficient beta 1 equal to 0 and the coefficient beta 2 equal to 1 over 1 plus c squared. The authors demonstrate that the following logic applies when considering the default values for beta 1 and beta 2, which are 0 0.9 and 0 0.99 respectively. If we were to plot how this series of functions would look like, we would get something like that. So we have the function cx every three steps and function minus x every two out of three steps. We can think of this series of functions as how the loss space would look for a mini batch in the dataset. And if you were to compute the gradients and try to find the minimum of this function using gradient descent, you would observe that this is equivalent to taking two small steps upward and one big step downward. Because the big step is at least two times bigger than the small step, the general direction is downward. So, if you apply gradient set, it would converge to the global minimum of minus 1. In contrast, Adam converges to plus 1 for the simple optimization problem for the reason I presented earlier. I prepared some little notebooks to show better why this happens. In the first one, we tried to find the minimum of the optimization problem using the simple gradient descent. Quickly going through the code, here I declare c equal to 3 the learning rate equal to 0 0.1, the initial point x equal to 0, and the first step t equal to 1. We also keep the values for t and x in two lists for further plotting. Because the function is defined to have x values between minus 1 and 1, we iterate while the x is in this interval. The function's gradient equals to c, or 3 in this case, when t modulo 3 equals to 0 and minus 1 in rest. Then we update x using the gradient descent rule and save the x and t values in the list we declared previously. Finally, we increment the step t. If we plot a graph, we observe the following updates for x. As I was saying, because c is bigger than the other two steps combined, the optimization converges to minus 1, which is the global minimum. We can observe that from the fact that twice steps in a row, we increase x by 0.1, which is the gradient of minus 1 multiplied by the learning rate 0.1 and then we decrease x by 0.3 which is the gradient 3 multiplied by the learning rate so we decrease x by 0.1 every 3 steps 
The second notebook I prepared uses the ADAM algorithm for this optimization problem. Several things have been modified in comparison with the previous notebook. We set beta 2 to be equal to 1 over 1 plus c e squared and the initial vt value equal to 0. We don't use the moment to empty because as it was described in the paper, we set beta 1 equal to 0. So we use the real gradients here. We also have a new list for plotting where we keep the adaptive learning rate, which is nothing else than the learning rate divided by the square root of vt. Down the line, we compute vt using the equation used for Adam and modify the update rule for x accordingly. Here I plotted both the values of x with blue and the adaptive learning rate with orange. We can see that in this case, the algorithm no longer converges to minus 1, but instead it diverges to plus 1. This happens because the adaptive learning rate does not allow for sudden gradient changes as we have in our series of functions and diminishes the influence of the gradient C that we get every three steps. We can observe this behavior in this graph from the fact that every three steps, the adaptive learning rate decreases, considerably reducing the effect of the C gradient so much that the combination of the two steps in the divergence direction is bigger and as a result, the model diverges to plus one. In the real world, we can imagine this affecting our algorithm when we get a big informative gradient that significantly reduces the loss. Still, because the previous gradients were lower, it gets scaled down and its impact is diminished. The third and the final notebook shows how the AMS mitigates this issue. The only update in the code I made compared with the one used for Adam is this line here where we update VT, where we take the maximum between the current value of VT and the previous value of VT. We can see here that in this case, the algorithm converges to minus one. So why is that? The answer is quite simple. We can see in this graph that the adaptive learning rate is forced to be non-increasing so it does not allow those oscillations that diminish the gradient C we get every three steps. Thus, even though we use Adam here, this optimization becomes equivalent to using the simple gradient descent, but with a lower learning rate due to the scaling that is taking place. In addition, the authors also experiment with beta parameters that are closer to the usual values, namely beta 1 equals to 0 0.9 and beta 2 equals to 0 0.99, and they show that this issue also happens in this case for the following function with a fixed step for the big gradient, but also in the stochastic case where the big gradient appears with a certain probability. The results obtained by this new optimization method are somehow mixed and several critiques, like the ones I've added in the description, have appeared regarding its applicability in training deep learning models. So make of it what you want. I personally never use AMS graph, but in my opinion, the ideas developed in the paper are sound from a theoretical point of view and can be useful to develop new and better optimization algorithms down the line. That was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe to be up to date with the new content, and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful time. See you!